In this video, you will learn about the nth term of a geometric sequence. First, let us recall the concepts on exponents. I want you to get a piece of paper and then write your answer for the following. Now set your answers aside and let's recall exponents. So for the first item, we have 2 cubed. Remember that 2 here is our base and 3 is our exponent or power. Always bear in mind that 3 here tells you or tells us how many times do we multiply the base by itself. So since we have 3 as the exponent, then we'll multiply 2 by itself 3 times. So it's 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So, in other words, 2 cubed is just equal to 8. So, our base here is 5 and our exponent is 4. So, we will multiply 5 by itself how many times? Okay, 4 times. So, we have 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, and the answer is just 625. For the last one, it's 3 squared. So, since the base is 3 and the exponent is 2, then we have to multiply 3 by itself twice. So, you have 3 times 3. And the answer is 9. 2 to the 3rd power is 8, 5 to the 4th power is 625, and 3 squared is equal to 9. Okay, so if you have the same answer, then good, because here in our topic on the nth term of the geometric sequence, the expertise on raising any constant to any exponent and its accuracy is of vital importance. A geometric sequence is a sequence in which each term after the first is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a fixed non-zero constant called the common ratio, denoted by letter R. The formula to solve for R is equal to a sub 2 divided by a sub 1, or the second term divided by the first term. The formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to the power of n minus 1, where a sub 1 is the first term, r is a common ratio, n is the number of terms, and a sub n is the nth term. Now let's try to solve for the nth term of the geometric sequence using its formula. For the first item, Suppose we're going to solve for the tenth term of the geometric sequence, 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on and so forth. So, for our solution, we will start with solving the value of our common ratio, r. So, since r is equal to the second term divided by the first term we have, r is equal to 2 divided by 1. And then the quotient is just 2. Next is, we'll write the equation or the formula down, so we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1, r raised to the power of n minus 1. So you will substitute properly the values that are given to our formula. So 10th term is unknown, so 10 would be our n, and then the first term is 1, and r, which we solved earlier, is 2. So that would be a sub 10 divided by the first term, which is 1, multiplied to r, which is 2, raised to the power of n, and again it is 10, minus 1. Okay, next would be simplification. So, we'll just copy the rest down and then subtract the values for our exponents. So, we have 10 minus 1, that is just 9. Next is we are going to raise 2 to the power of 9. So that is just the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. <laughs> okay, you multiply 2 by itself 9 times. So that would be equal to 512. So the last step would be multiply 512 to the first term, which is 1. So we have the same 512. In other words, the tenth term 
is just equal to 512. Let's try another one. So again, the solution would start off as solving R first. So we have the second term divided by the first term. So the second term is negative 6 divided by the first term is 2. The quotient is negative 3. So that negative 3 there is our value of R. Now next is substitute the right value here in our formula. So n is 6 since we are going to solve for the 6th term. And then the first term is 2. And then our r, which was solved earlier, was negative 3. So we have a sub 6 is equal to 2, which is the first term, times r, negative 3. Raised to the power of n again is 6, minus one so from there we're going to simplify first subtract the exponents so you have six minus one is just five next simplify our exponent negative three raised to the power of five so we have negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three times negative three so we have negative 243 and then we'll write down the result here lastly We'll multiply 2 times negative 243, and the answer is negative 486. Uh, in other words, that is our sixth term of the geometric sequence 2, negative 6, 18, and so on and so forth. Now for our next example, suppose we're going to identify a sub 7 of 1, 5, 25, 125, and so on and so forth. So for our solution, Again, we'll start with finding or solving for the common ratio. That is just the second term divided by the first term. So 5 divided by 1 is just 5. Next, use the formula and substitute the right values. So since the seventh term would be, uh, is the one that we are going to identify, so we're going to use 7 as the value of our n. So a sub 7 is equal to our a1 is 1. And then our r is equal to 5. n here is again 7 minus 1. And then simplify, subtract the exponent first. So we have 7 minus 1, that is just 6. Next would be simplify 5 raised to the power of 6. That is just 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So we have 15,625 as a value. And then multiply that to our first term, which is 1. So we have 15,625 as our a sub 7. Now what if we have items whose sequences or geometric sequences has variables or letters as its terms? So like this one, we have given the sequence x squared, x to the 5th power, x to the 8th power, and so on and so forth. Solve for a sub 6. Let's write the given sequence down and then first solve for the value of r. The second term here is x to the power of 5 divided by x squared, which is the first term. So remember our loss of exponents on quotient of a power. So if you have to divide x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 2, you just subtract its exponents. Okay, so 5 minus 2 is 3. So the answer is x cube for our r. Next, use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 r raised to the power of n minus 1. So the value of our n here, since we are going to solve for a sub 6, then it is 6 equals a sub 1 is our first term, which is x squared. And then our r is just equal to x to the power of 0 x cubed raised to the power of n, which is again 6, minus 1, and then simplify. So copy the rest, and then we will just subtract the exponent 6 minus 1, so we have 5, and then simplify x cubed to the power of 5. Okay, this is law of exponent, power of a power, wherein one base is raised to a certain power raised to another power so all you have to do is to multiply its exponents so we have 3 times 5 is just 15 so in simplification x cubed to the power of 5 is just equal to x to the power of 15 
Lastly, we are going to get the product of x squared and x to the power of 15. So this is under product of a power and loss of exponents. All you have to do is to add the power or the exponent. So 2 plus 15 is just 17. So our final answer would be a sub 6 is equal to x raised to the power of 17.